It's the simplest form of meditation. It's breathing. It's back to the breath every day. When you go for a run, it reminds you that you are alive. You are a living, breathing thing because that's the one fundamental thing you have to do and nothing else matters. As a child, uh, that's my, you know, my earliest memories of running are from you know, races that the Chattanooga Track Club produced. Shortly before the Chattanooga Track Club formed, um, a group of these, these, these uh, interested bodies of runners uh, decided to form at uh, Kirkman High School and they would do a couple laps around the track and they were like, all right, we're going we're gonna to do this race. And the very first Chattanooga Chase in 1968 was out and back on Amico Highway. It is currently the oldest still in existence race that the, track, the Chattanooga Track Club uh, uh, put on. They got together as a group like on a Saturday and did, did their runs, but they all had jobs. So you would have president of the, of the bank, one guy was a farmer out in Udawag, and it didn't matter, and it doesn't matter now, who you run with, you, uh, it just brings people together. But I had a lot of energy as a child, a lot of energy, so I'm not what you call a gifted runner. It takes dedication and discipline, and I have discipline and dedication. Sue Ann uh, is an am <laughs> she's an amazing woman, and if you go back and look at archival race results, you're gonna see her in everything. It's fun to look at. I, I mean, I hadn't looked at this in two years, and I'm going through, wow. I mean, to see like Tim Ensign, I think he was 15 when he was running all these races. And I remember him when he was 15. Skinny little kid. Still at it, getting slower all, every day, but uh, still, still love running. So. Dick Dillard, who uh, was the uh, original owner of the Fast Break, uh, was my uh, neighbor. He got me running and uh, I just always liked it. That accomplishment of winning this race is, is, is huge for me. Going into seventh grade, I uh, was in the kitchen watching the 76 Montreal Olympics. With my mom, we were watching the marathon, and I looked at her and I said, Mom, I think I can do this. I look like those guys. Uh, running is, is a sport, but it's also a way of life. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve with it. You know, in the in the late '60s and early '70s, the running boom happened in the in the country, right? Not just Chattanooga, but everywhere was was huge. Races were tremendous. There's a picture here of a thousand runners at, at this race. It was one of those things where you got to go see your buddies. There was no social media. You had you waited all week long to go to the race to see all these all these friends of yours and compete and then you got really excited to open the paper up the next day to see what your result was. And then running kind of started to fade off. It wasn't about racing as much anymore. It was more about fitness. As the Chattanooga Chase aged, the popularity of the race shrank. Going from a thousand plus runners in early years to barely over a hundred runners and the race was on the verge of extinction about six years ago. The track club came and said, would you guys be interested in directing a race? Uh, we said yes uh, about six years ago and started looking at the archives, started looking at what the original course looked like, started looking at problems with the race. And then the first year we had nearly 500 folks show back up. And that was the first time since I was, a, since my younger days that I had felt that feeling that I forgot. That I, that I knew what running and racing and being together was about. What we want to do this time is we want to beat the all-time record, right, which is a, around a thousand folks. We want to have, we want to put a thousand folks in Riverview. Find them. Where were they? Those guys are out there at, at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning uh, doing the, the setup, um, you know, the course markings. 
uh, the track club does the race day registration and packet pickup that morning, which is crucial setting all that up and getting people going. Folks, folks that registered before today, head over to the pavilion to get your packet pickup information. Since um, Alan Outlaw took over the chase, he's been the best. How many times have you done the chase, Greg? Five, six. Five, six times, right? So, you as know. soon as I met Alan, right? That's, I was hooked. This is uh, Brandon Hudgens. Uh, he's from High Point, North Carolina. He is the uh, current record holder. He broke the record last year after 38 years. So he's back again to, uh, to hang out. So we're right pleased to have him. So you know, I think as long as the as Allen and Fast Break uh, want to are behind it, uh, it'll <laughs> it'll be successful. So not not to put any pressure on him, but. I'm out on the course somewhere, whether that be at an aid station or whether I'm at an intersection kind of directing traffic. Um, but the main thing is I usually walk away from that race losing my voice and my hands are usually sore. So it's a really great energy. It's always awesome to be surrounded by athletes. It gives you that extra boost that you need. And everybody was super nice. Um, everybody was really encouraging each other, which is fantastic. It's always great. And it's a very unique course. It, you run it through Riverview, and it's uh, it's, you know, it's beautiful. Uh. It's got long, windy roads. It's very it's it's very interesting to run on because there's, there's shade. There, it's very challenging. There's a particular there's a couple particular hills, but one in particular, Minicata, which is this three quarters of a mile or a half a mile hill to the top. Generally, whoever makes it to the top of Minicata will probably win the race. It's up my alley anyway, let's just say that, so I'm pleased with it. The last two miles is fun. It's, it's, it's tough. It's probably tough to race around the town, really. It's hard, a lot of hills. Then you think it's over and it's not over. The long, the last mile it seems to go on. Everybody's saying, oh, you're almost there, but I know that I don't fall for that. <laughs> You know, the race has definitely evolved uh, from when I first started doing it, but to me, it's it's kind of come back to the way it was, which as I remember it, and it's been a long time ago, but it was just kind of, it was always like a festival atmosphere. It's kind of a party. Um, that's the idea behind it, and that's the way it was originally. This year, I believe we had more than a thousand participants in both races roll through here. We're, we're ready to do it again next year. Yeah, I think the future is really bright for running in Chattanooga. The, uh, for a long time, uh, guys in my generation would would say that we were we were faster, you know, in high school and college than the, the kids are today. But uh, not anymore. I mean, it's just, they're getting coached better, trained smarter, and uh, kind of pushing each other on. We're seeing a lot of youngsters come in, which is great because we haven't seen that in a long time. And now that's that's going to be the growth of running in Chattanooga is, is the young people coming up. And it's becoming cool to run again. 